the NBA's first superstar. George Mikan is a towering figure in the history of the sport. A three-time scoring champion, Mikan was the centerpiece of the league's first dynasty, leading the Minneapolis Lakers to five NBA titles in the late 1940s and early 50s. The thing about George was he carried the NBA in the early years. You know, I think with the Minneapolis Lakers, they won five NBA championships. And of course, George was the man behind that. You remembered playing against him that he had a shot where he'd get the ball and pivot, drive, take a move to his left and shoot a shot off the backboard. But the thing about it was he led with his left elbow. And if your face was anywhere close to that, playing it, you got an elbow in the mouth and you spit out teeth for a few minutes. In his day, he was by far and away the number one player in the NBA. They called him the gentle giant, but he was not gentle on the floor. I mean, he played hard and uh, he played aggressive and he gave 100% every second he was out there. George Mikan forces his way through the center, spins and shoots, and is fouled by Paul Seymour. The footage I remember of him was a tall, nice looking man in glasses, winning the championship, kissing all his teammates. That just shows to me he was a great team player, he was a great friend, and he was a great leader, and he cared about being dominant. He embraced being dominant. That's why he's the father of dominance. It was Mike and the money player who played with a broken arm in the World Series of 1949 against the Washington Capitals. And it was Mike and who became the greatest scoring machine in the history of the pro game. The first time I saw Mike and I went to the state tournament um, and we saw Mike Ken play with his team. He was uh, magnificent, uh, almost seven feet tall, and he was like a dancer. He was just perfect. Mike Ken was really such the substance of the league. I remember Madison Square Garden one night had George Mike Ken versus Knicks, not Knicks versus the Lakers. So we all got dressed and ready to go on the floor. George got up and walked out the door. We all sat there. And he said, what, what are you guys doing? We says, well, George, your name's up there. You go play him. So we, we joked around a lot. Number 99, the first face of the NBA, set the standard of what was expected from the league star player. Well, he was the league's first big star. I mean, he was a centerpiece, the best player of the first half decade. And he was really a game changer. He was a center back when big men really weren't that coordinated, but he perfected the left and right hand hook shot with the mic and drill, where he would get the ball and constantly go left, right, left, right. And he became a terror in the post. And he also became a game changer because the NBA had to change rules all because of him. They had to widen the lane, and the three-second call, and they had the out, out, outlaw goaltending. And then in 1950-51, the Fort Wayne Pistons played the Lakers, and they played stall ball because they didn't want Mike in to get the ball and hurt them. The final score of that game was 19 to 18. Can you imagine that? And then three years later, the NBA instituted the 24-second clock, mainly because of George Mike. So many contributions to the game while he was alive and even after he passed on. Well, he was the first uh, commissioner of the ABA and invented the red, white, and blue ball. Now, the NBA didn't keep the red, white, and blue ball, but it's used as a money ball in the three-point contest during All-Star Weekend. And speaking of the three-point shot, he basically wanted the ABA to have the three-point line. It became very popular. And after the merger in 1976, the NBA added the three-point shot as a one-year experiment in 1979, decided to keep it. I think that was a pretty good idea. Pretty great idea. A member of the inaugural Basketball Hall of Fame class in 1959, the first player to score over 10,000 points in the league. My first basketball hero was a guy named George Mikan, who was the first really superstar in NBA basketball. And I went to see him play. And after the game, he came out of the locker room and walked over to me and talked to me for 20 minutes. And at the time, I was third string varsity. He was just talking to a young basketball player. I was six, seven then. He ended the conversation by saying, you got to come and play for the Lakers. And I think there were less than a half a dozen kids in my graduating class that went to college. So at that time, we were not expected to go to college. But he expressed expectations of me. And outside of my family and my high school coach, there's nobody else that ever said anything like that to me. That we expect you to be successful. 